Due to the graphic nature of wound specimen collection, viewer discretion is advised. Hello, I'm Dr. Mike Miller, and I'm the Director of Microbiology Technical Services, which is a private consulting service for diagnostic laboratories around the country. I'm also retired from the Center for Disease Control after 35 years, and I've had a lifelong interest in specimen management and clinical relevance. Now there are a lot of references that are available for you in this regard and one has been produced by the American Society for Microbiology and there are many others that are available to you. So I want to welcome you to this most informative series of demonstrations of specimen collection for diagnostic microbiology. Receiving a wound specimen for culture offer some unique challenges for the pre-analytical and analytical components of the workup. First, regarding pre-analytical issues, the term wound really doesn't tell us anything about the specimen. While the doctor needs to know if there's an active pathogen causing the lesion, the laboratory needs to know what type of wound there it is, where it is on the body, whether it's a surface wound or a deep or surgical wound. Our accurate interpretation of results depends on a specific description of this specimen and the laboratory should require it on the requisition. For example, your requisition should say surface thigh wound or forearm laceration, not just wound. We also need to know if this is a surface sample or a deep wound sample or from a surgical site. That will control whether or not we can consider anaerobes in our culture analysis. This complex area of wound specimens is critical to understand. For instance, burn wounds may require surface swabs or tissue samples. Human bite wounds present a challenge because of the polymicrobial nature of these lesions. Animal bite wounds may require an initial focus on recovery of Pasturella or Capnocytophaga before further analysis is attempted. Trauma associated wounds should probably not be cultured within the first 48 hours of the trauma event because environmental flora may obscure important organisms. Here, the best time for culture is immediately post debridement. Importantly, specimens from surgery should preferably be tissue and not swabs, but surgical site infections present challenges as well. Always consider using the gram stain to evaluate the quality of the sample. If on gram stain you see some degree of squamous epithelial cells, you can be assured that the specimen will contain commensal flora that could complicate your interpretation. Many facilities use the published criteria for evaluating the quality of the specimen and the references listed there on your screen. Check it out. Most importantly, the preferred specimen of choice remains a sample of tissue, not a swab of the tissue. However, if a swab is used to collect the specimen, the specimen of choice is always the advancing margin of the lesion and not the pus and debris on the surface of the wound. If a swab is to be used to collect a wound specimen, then this is the swab used to sample the lesion. The swab is a normal size swab for most patients. Specimen collection should be performed by healthcare personnel who have completed training and demonstrated competency. Always read the manufacturer's package insert for specific instruction regarding specimen collection and transport for the type of test kit being used. Those who collect the specimen should always wear personal protective equipment, including a lab coat or scrubs, a mask, such as a surgical or N95 mask, eye protection, and gloves when collecting any specimen. Always remember to perform hand hygiene before and after the procedure. Explain to the patient what you are about to do. 
Due to the graphic nature of wound specimen collection, viewer discretion is advised. So let's see how this wound collection should be performed. First, clean the area, remove the dead debris, and firmly sample the advancing margin of the lesion. Remove the screw cap from the tube and insert the swab into the transport container all the way to the bottom of the tube. Holding the swab shaft close to the rim of the tube and keeping the tube away from the face, break the swab shaft at the pre-molded break point. Screw the cap on tightly to prevent leakage and dispose of the swab shaft in a regular trash receptacle. Apply patient identification label or write patient information on the tube label. Follow the standard operating procedures of transport and testing in your facility. Remove gloves and perform hand hygiene. Generally, specimens should be transported at refrigerated or room temperature and arrive at the laboratory within two hours of collection. If not tested immediately, the specimen may be held at refrigerator or room temperature for 24 to 48 hours depending on the sample type. Refer to manufacturer's package insert for specific instructions. Please note that the eSwab liquid amies fluid maintains the viability of diverse bacteria. Do not send a dry swab as this will lead to unsatisfactory results. If the tube spills its contents prior to inserting the swab, the liquid is non-toxic. Simply put the swab into another tube before sending it to the laboratory and discard the spilled tube. If the tube spills after contamination, follow procedure for blood and body fluid cleanup. Refer to your facility's infection control manual for further direction. If contaminated fluid splashes onto the person collecting the sample, treat as a blood and body fluid exposure. Refer to your facility's infection control manual for further direction.